All right, now this is being recorded, so I will publish it. Oops, what's... So, well, well, let's get back to the theoretical part. Uh, lambdas and method references. These are new, relatively new features of Java language uh, that appeared in uh, Java version 8. And before that, uh, we were able to write everything without lambdas and method references uh, using uh, the so-called anonymous, anonymous classes. Okay, try to understand this code. What we have here, we have a timer, timer class, timer object, uh, that's going to do something in parallel. We will talk about parallel programming <laughs> a bit later. Uh, and uh, this is a library, library class. So what it does is just delays execution. And we need to tell, tell it what to execute. What we do we want to execute. And uh, in order to, uh, to do this, we are pa passing an instance of object that must in implement this interface, action listing, action performed, action event. So something is a hook is called, this, uh, this method is going to be called after uh, one second. And uh, before Java 8, we wrote code like this. We just uh, instantiated one listener here, and th this is called anonymous class. So we are not writing uh, my listener class my listener extends uh, uh, or implements actions listener and blah 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 I had action performed and here we have some uh, some implementation what we are doing here is just anonymous class this means that we are instantiating it in place we are using it only once here we need this implementation only here and uh, we have this method and in this method since it's an inner class since it's a nested class the class inside the, some bigger class, some bigger parent class. Uh, uh, the internal state of parent class, of enclosing class, is available for us. Uh, uh, this is how it was done before Java 8. Another example. Uh, we have uh, some, uh, some array of uh, strings and we want to sort it. And uh, uh, let's say we want to sort it not alphabetically, but uh, by the length of uh, string, by some, some, other, some other aspect, some other property to, to, to be used to be sorted. So uh, we are writing our own com comparator. It's, uh, uh, it's an interface, so we need to implement this uh, compare method. And we say that uh, we are going to sort it not alphabetically, so we are implementing custom comparators, so it compares according to length of the string. And also what we have here is uh, an anonymous, anonymous class. So it's a normal thing, it, ju it still works in uh, uh, Java, but uh, we use it uh, uh, rarely now because we have lambdas. Another, another example is uh, an example of predicate. I think you are studying logic already. Who knows what predicate in logic is? What is predicate? Okay, and uh, uh, nobody explained you what predicate is. Maybe we knew it in the other world. Okay, okay. Predicate, uh, you can think of, as a mathematician, you can think of a predicate as a function that takes uh, objects as uh, its arguments and return bo boolean. So, uh, the classical, uh, I don't know, Aristotelian uh, uh, predicate, I am mortal, like x is mortal, mortal, x, x, so if you put here me, then it returns true. Yeah. If you put here, I don't know, some god, then you return false. Uh, so yeah, predicate is just a function that takes object and uh, returns some true or false about, about it. So uh, what we have here is an example of predicate. So uh, we want to uh, get a list of hidden files. And see, uh, we have uh, this uh, file filter, which actually is a form of predicate because it accepts file as an argument and returns boolean value uh, showing is it hidden or not hidden if it's hidden then this list files method is going to return only uh, the array only of those files 
uh, for which this predicate returns true. So in our case, uh, we are going to get a list of uh, only hidden files. Uh, not assertion. Assertion is uh, uh, is something that uh, is going to pass when it's true, when uh, 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 something, some condition inside it, right, is true, and is going to throw exception if condition inside it is false. So uh, assertion, uh, assert takes boolean here, and predicate takes object here it's uh, uh, yeah yeah it's something, something yeah so you think of a predicate as a function from objects from some objects to uh, true or false all right and uh, welcome lambda expressions starting from java 8 and uh, you can see that uh, these things are lengthy are wordy so this is uh, uh, many people yeah criticize the java for that so to write some simple thing, you need to write many, just uh, lots of code. So starting from Java, uh, Java version 8, uh, in, uh, Lambda expressions in language appeared. So Java was, uh, uh, was language where many concepts appeared first, but not Lambdas. <laughs> Lambdas appeared earlier in other languages. And uh, this is how it looks like now. So uh, instead of instead of uh, passing uh, this uh, anonymous class here, creating this anonymous class like this action listener, we are overriding this method. Uh, we just writing it like this: a single line lambda expression that takes two arguments here, string first, string second, and it returns integer. So uh, lambda is actually a function and the uh, function has arguments and has return value so here we have lambda that takes two strings and returns integer and this lambda can act as comparable interface as ca comparator interface uh, the second example uh, we can write lambda expression just a single liner here it just returns uh, an expression uh, we can uh, use multi-line then we using curly braces here and we can write any any code any ifs any loops anything just anything you want and then it will look like uh, method implementation so you need to call return to return some value unlike lambdas in other languages like kotlin or groovy uh, if we have curly braces here we need to to use return and uh, even more, we, we are not obliged to, to pass some arguments. This is example of no argument lambda. And uh, we are not obliged to return something because uh, uh, println returns void. So this is also an example of lambda expression. So uh, yes, uh, if we have, uh, uh, if we are using multi-line la lambda or if we are using curly braces, then we must use return. Uh, if it's a single liner, then no curly braces just for the sake of, uh, uh, of clarity and sh uh, shortness of code. Okay, which uh, of these are valid lambda expressions? Now that you know. How about this one? Does it look like a valid lambda expression? Why? Because it's empty. Because it's empty. Yeah. yeah, it's empty lambda expression oh. which accepts nothing and returns nothing. But it, it, so it, it can be. Uh, it can be. Okay. Still, it can be. This one is very unusual looking, but uh, perfectly valid lambda expressions. And sometimes you will utilize th <laughs> this, exa uh, this exact code in your code when uh, you have some API and this API demands some uh, lambda to be passed and uh, some runnable to, uh, to be it's passed. Like so yeah, so you can uh, just do nothing, just do nothing. And uh, we have curly braces here, but since it doesn't return anything, we don't need return a statement here. Okay, how about this one, the second one? Is it valid? Is it a single line expression? Uh, yes. So why isn't it valid? It's valid? Uh, 
it's constant expression, yes. Uh, when I told you that lambda is just a uh, code that does something, it, uh, uh, it's not necessarily for the code to do complex stuff. See, so here it just returns a uh, constant. So it's, this is a perfect, per perfect example of lambda, it's just trivial, but it just uh, always returns constant. Okay, if uh, the third one is, is valid. Yeah, it's uh, multi-line. Oh, we have. It's not multi-line actually, but it's uh, we we have we using curly braces, so we're having return and this semicolon. Uh, if you write if you write this lambda in uh, IntelliJ idea, it will propose you to change it to something more concise. But uh, still, from the point of view of Java compiler, it's valid lambda. Okay, what about uh, the fourth one? Is it valid or not? Why? But, um, initialize I. I, I is, uh, is a parameter here. Yeah, I is a parameter yeah. here. We can uh, concatenate string and integer, so integer will be con converted to string, so no problem so far. And uh, why is... Uh, so is it valid or not? <laughs> but actually not, because because we are using return, and since we are using return, we must use yeah. curly braces. So, and the semicolon, yeah. And this one? Uh, I think it should be, have return because... Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it should use return and or semicolon. Or without curly braces. Or without curly, br curly braces. Yeah, you got this. So, yeah. I think now you, it's uh, absolutely clear for you what uh, uh, correct valid lambda expression in Java languages. It's, it's simple. Yes. Uh, uh, sorry? The third one. Third one? Yeah. Third one is uh, valid uh, because we are using curly braces and return. As I told you, if you write this in uh, IntelliJ IDEA, uh, it will compile and will run, but IntelliJ IDEA will ask to change it to something more concise because uh, we can uh, just replace it with Ma Mario like in the, in the second one and it will do the same, but will be more concise. But still, from the point of view of Java compiler, this one is valid. Why is the semicolon inside the Because you are, we are using semicolons uh, after, after lines in Java. So this is actually multi, uh, an example of multi-line uh, expression in, uh, in Java language. We, we can pull before this return there might be some complex logic and uh, we just uh, use semicolons okay so uh, what can lambdas be assigned to so these are lambda expressions and uh, uh, each expression like 2 plus 2 has v has a value and this value can be assigned to some variable like uh, integer variable uh, like int i equals 2 plus 2 and here we have uh, lambda expressions. So lambda expression is not the result of this expression. It's another, another sort of uh, indirect uh, uh, call. So what can lambda, uh, lambdas be assigned to? So uh, here comes uh, the thing called functional interface. A functional interface, the interface in Java language is called functional interface if it uh, has no more than one abstract method. If you have an interface, and in this a interface you have exactly one, one and only one abstract method, then this is uh, uh, this is interface can be called functional. Uh, as I told you earlier, in uh, interfaces there m might be default methods, not abstract methods. So you might have m multiple default methods, but only one abstract method uh, for the interface to be to call it a functional. And if we have such an interface, then it's clear what to run, what method to run if we are going to run a lambda assigned to an interface. Uh, so uh, we can also tag this uh, interface with functional interface annotation, but uh, this is not obligatory. This is not obligatory uh, because, uh, uh, because of backwards compatibility, of course. Uh, there were many, many interfaces that were functional before Java 8 and 
not all of them can be marked uh, functional interface, but it will help you uh, to write code because if you mark an interface with functional interface annotation, and then when you try to add, put more than one abstract method to this interface, it won't compile. Just It's just a check for, uh, for compiler. And uh, in order to assign lambda expression to a functional interface, the interface method must match the parameters and the return m uh, value of lambda. Like in this example, action listener uh, is uh, something like e to, to something. Like it uh, <coughs> uh, doesn't return anything, so it might be void. So action listener is assignable to this sort of lambdas. Comparator string. Uh, here we have a comparator string has uh, one method called uh, compare and it accepts two string arguments and uh, it expects an integer result. So here uh, we have a lambda expression that's compatible with this uh, type. So this assignment will compile and work. And please note that we, we are not specifying the types of lambda arguments here. So we might put string s1, string s2 here, but as well we can omit these types. This doesn't mean that these variables are not typed or untyped like in JavaScript language. They are still typed and their type is string, but this type is inferred from the left side of, the, of this assignment. Like, if we have comparator string, then uh, what, what does compiler do? It says, hmm, which is the one and only abstract method of comparator? Okay, this one. This one, which values does it expect? Uh, two strings. Okay, we have two, two values here. If it were three or only one, then it fails to compile. Now we have two, two parameters and uh, two parameters in that method. Okay, which types? Strings. Then the compiler will assume uh, string uh, type for S1 and string type for S2. And also it will check for return type. Return type must be integer and here, here it is. Here we have integer result. So this is example, this is an example of assignment from lambda expression to some, uh, uh, some variable typed as functional interface. And also we, we can see type inference of Java. So we are not obliged to put types here. And this is, this is very important. Uh, and uh, uh, some people just uh, praise this uh, feature when it, uh, all, when it uh, appeared uh, in Java 8, because now we can write more concise code. But uh, as you can see here, looking only at the code, now it's very difficult to understand the types of these variables without the help of IDE. But this is what modern programming is. If, uh, I don't know, in 1990s it was uh, very important for you to, to read just plain text in plain text editor and understand all the code. Now when you are coding in modern programming language you, you just uh, cannot understand the code without help of IDE. So this is what type inference in modern program la programming languages are. Maybe it would be more clear if we were obliged to put string s1, string s2 here, but we are not obliged. Also we can. Okay, uh, void compatibility. If uh, lambda, uh, if I don't, no, not lambda, if a functional interface uh, method expects void result, uh, in order to assign, uh, lambdas are assignable uh, that return void or non-void. So we, we can just uh, ignore the result. Uh, because, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, for example, list.add, it uh, uh, returns boolean, and uh, thus it's a assignable to predicate, right? So uh, it's quite an unusual thing to to see that list.add it returns boolean and thus it's not only says something about s but it's also mutates some uh, external state. So this is an unusual uh, maybe some unusual example of lambda but still it's valid one. Uh, but also we can use this as consumer 
because consumer dot accept it returns void so it doesn't expect of uh, list dot add s to return anything but still this lambda is assignable to this interface because uh, we just throw away the result of uh, list dot add and uh, it works perfectly well so uh, uh, this uh, this lambda can serve as consumer and uh, in most uh, scenarios it will be just uh, should be considered as a consumer okay another thing that we must understand that uh, before uh, before this lesson we uh, we thought we assumed that object is a universal super super class super type and you can assign just uh, anything to object so anything I was told uh, I was telling you anything in Java is object uh, with the exception of uh, primitive types like you cannot assign five to object but uh, it will Java will auto box it for you and it will convert five as a primitive to integer with big I uh, object and you can assign it to, to an object uh, it's not more valid with lambdas because object is not a functional interface so you cannot assign just uh, this will not compile because uh, it's an empty lambda so uh, you say hmm it might be an object but uh, this assignment won't work because this assignment works only if there is a functional interface on the left so that compiler will know which method to run which method to run on object if we want to invoke this lambda just no idea because and this this will not compile but if we uh, assign it to runnable variable like this one runnable r then it's okay because runnable has run method that accepts no no parameters and it doesn't expect uh, this to return anything so this will compile and after this after this or after uh, just uh, casting this to runnable we can assign this to object also it doesn't make sense because when it's object we we completely lost all the information about the type of this runnable that it's runnable that we can run anything or something like this okay and uh, intermediate conclusions uh, see the difference between java 7 version code and java 8 version code on the left is uh, using anonymous class before invention of lambdas and to the right we have uh, code that uh, we can use after invention of lambdas so it's much more concise much more clear of course it's much more readable so instead of all these wordy things we can use lambdas and okay fortunately we have them in java language just don't be afraid of them just utilize them and uh, actually this is uh, not everything about lambdas uh, in lambda just like in uh, just like in an in inner uh, class we can uh, have access to some outer variables some outer scope uh, so if we have uh, like this uh, this method like we uh, accepting string text repeat message like uh, and with some delay and uh, we are going to repeat some text with some delay so uh, inside this lambda we can use this text variable although text is not a parameter of lambda text is a parameter of uh, repeat message outer method but uh, in this uh, lambda text is just like in the scope of this method just like inside the scope of this method and uh, so it's easy to write but we also need to understand how it works because when we pass lambda to this uh, listener to this timer here uh, we are exiting uh, this method immediately like uh, we just uh, created a new timer we just passed this delay we just started the timer and then now we are exiting uh, exiting this uh, <coughs> method so we are losing any reference to this text uh, variable and uh, so actually when we pass this uh, listener variable here a listener not only uh, contained this 
the reference to this snippet of code. It also contained all the closures, all the captured, uh, uh, all the captured variables that are needed for this lambda to be executed. So, uh, thus, it just uh, uh, took this text, uh, memorized it, so inside some invisible field under the hood, and uh, uh, this text can be used. And uh, this implies some restrictions of uh, uh, variables that can be used in lambdas. These variables must be effectively final only in uh, uh, Java lambdas. Uh, this means if we have uh, integer start some integer start variable here and uh, we are going to I don't know create many action listeners inside uh, this for loop here and in this action listeners we are going to mutate the start variable and this won't compile why because uh, uh, what Java expects from us is that actually what it captures, what it uh, uh, the uh, the captured values in that are captured inside mouse are actually constant values. So they won't ever change since they are assigned before before the invocation of method uh, that accepts lambda. So uh, this can't uh, this will end up with error. Can't mutate captured value. And uh, this will uh, end up with a uh, compilation error. You cannot refer to changing i because uh, here i is uh, changing. So effectively final variables are those that are either already final, so you are just defining final variable, you are assigning some value to it, and then you are not going to change it afterwards. Or uh, if you put final for them, the code will still compile. This means after some point, uh, on this, uh, when you assign this variable, you are not going to change it afterwards. Uh, compiler is able to define uh, the effectively final so that it, it doesn't force us to write extra code. So it's good for you if you put final variable, if you declare a variable as a final, uh, then it will be more clear for you maybe, but you're not obliged. There's another, uh, another implicit thing, another implicit modern feature of language. So. It just implies that this variable is effectively final, but you must understand that it's obligatory for you to use only final or effectively final variables. Well, I have to say that this is not the case in Kotlin. For example, in Kotlin you can utilize um, mutable variables inside lambdas, but it was made at the cost of extra uh, memory overhead and extra performance overhead. In, in Java, they decided to uh, utilize only immutable variables inside lambdas. Okay, and this is not uh, this is not the end. This is not all. Uh, we can do even shorter than this. Instead of writing this lambda like event system out print event event, we can write it like this. Because many times. Uh, the lambdas that we are writing are just a delegation to a method call of some class. So uh, it's a very common scenario when the lambda that we want is consisting only uh, from one method call. So instead of lambda expression, we can utilize method reference. So method reference is another form of uh, lambda expression, that, which means please call this method with uh, such and such uh, parameters. And here are some examples of uh, <coughs> method references in Java. Instead of writing this, we are telling, okay, please call println method on the object system.out. So, uh, this is where method reference begins, here. Like, to the left of, of this expression, we are just uh, figuring out which uh, which object do we need? Like here, system dot out is object, and uh, uh, then we are using this uh, colon colon syntax, and we say please call println. What does this mean? Println accepts, uh, for example, one uh, string parameter, and it returns void. 
and to the left or, or here we have a lambda that accepts one string parameters and returns void. So these are actually equivalent, uh, two equivalent forms of writing the same thing. Uh, this one, uh, two strings, and we want to compare them ignoring case. Uh, here we have a reference, method reference, but slightly different one. Instead of object here, we have class reference here, string, and uh, see what we have. We have uh, uh, S1, compared to ignore case, is a method on class string. So, uh, first one is the object itself, the second one is a parameter of this method, but as a result we are getting a lambda that, uh, that needs two parameters. See? S1, S2. S1 is an object itself, S2 is the only parameter of uh, compared to ignore case. And thus we can write it like this. String, double colon, compared to ignore case. So for this to execute, we don't have uh, concrete, some concrete object here, like in this scenario. Here we have only class. And, uh, but still, we need an extra parameter in the very beginning, like this S1. Does it make sense for you? Okay, so yeah, this is important. This is a tricky, tricky stuff. The uh, question is, like, how, how does the, uh, the, the, how does this uh, string compound for in your case, uh, how, I understand how the parameter is actually passed there. Ah, yeah, yeah. How is this used? How is used? <coughs> if you are, if you are writing like, uh, writing it like this, yeah. it's converted to lambda. And uh, this compared to ignore case is not a static method. We are going to ca st cover st static methods later. It's not a static method. So it uh, needs to be called on some, uh, some object. Uh, so the first parameter is the object, and the second parameter, uh, and third and fourth, uh, are going to be uh, parameters of this. So they're called like, uh, on, uh, like dot, string, uh, and... Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be com uh, converted to exactly the, the, same, uh, uh, the same lambda. I will reiterate uh, this on the next slide. And here is another example. Uh, method power is an uh, example of static method. So it doesn't need any uh, context, object context to be run. So this is uh, easily converted to, to method reference. Math double colon power is just uh, like this lambda here because it accepts two, two arguments. So what we have here is uh, uh, three ways to define method reference. So this is just, uh, <coughs> just a picture that explains the three, three types of method references in Java. So when you see a double colon in Java, uh, you must uh, understand, you must define for yourself what actually does this mean? Because it, it might mean three different things. I just warn you. Because uh, for many novice programmers, they can, they just capture this, uh, this one, maybe this one, but not this one, and they just going crazy. They just cannot understand this method reference. There are three, uh, three ways to define method references. If we have object, we can uh, uh, call on object double colon method, and this will mean uh, the following like uh, all the parameters of methods will be parameter of lambda. And the object we already have here, like you see. Uh, here we don't have object, it's instance method, so it will be converted to method to lambda, and the first parameter of this lambda will be an object on which instance method is called. I think now, now you see, right? And uh, the, se the third one, it's a uh, simple one, uh, most simple one, it's class static method. Static method is just plain function, it just can work without, without any object, so it works like this. So we have uh, parameters of static method and they just can convert it to it. Okay, so the these are three methods, three ways to define method reference. And uh, besides that, we have uh, constructor and array constructor, constructor and array constructor reference. I think this makes sense for you. We can write class new, and uh, constructor is a sort of static method, 
in, in the class, right? Because you're just calling the constructor with its arguments and so it's going to work. And uh, this one is tricky and it's uh, very rarely used, but still it's there in Java language. You can uh, call array constructor reference. Uh, so it works like this. First argument is going to be integer, of course. It's going to be size of array that you want. So this is just the lambda that accepts integer as its first argument. So you will get a, uh, an array of a class with a given with a given length. Okay, and um, uh, talking about lambdas and method references, one might ask. Are they always uh, equivalent? Because uh, in many scenarios you can change lambda to method reference, and in many scenarios you can change method reference to lambda. In uh, most scenarios you will change uh, lambda to method reference because, as you can see, as you can plainly see, method references are just more concise. They are just more concise, and uh, they are. Uh, more performant in Java under hood, so uh, there is no, usually there is no reason to use uh, lambdas when you can use method references right, instead of lambda. Uh, but uh, there is a slight difference about uh, invocation or about, uh, uh, I don't know, calculation of uh, these uh, lambdas and method references. Uh, uh, like see, if we have object that might be null at certain point, uh, and we are calling some method here in the in form of uh, lambda, uh, and this object might be null when we do something, uh, then a null pointer exception will be called on lambda invocation only. When we invoke lambda. A Java virtual machine will uh, find that object is null and uh, uh, NPE will be uh, thrown. If we are calling this one object double colon method as uh, invocation, as method reference to on, uh, on our object, then a null pointer exception will be thrown when we are calling do something. Not when do something will call internally, will call this lambda. But when we are calling to something, because in order to calculate method reference, Java Virtual Machine uh, must uh, dereference object, and if it's null, null pointer exception will be thrown earlier, which is actually better, because remember, throw early catch late. The earlier we get an exception, the better, uh, the easier it is to debug. And this is another, maybe, another argument why method references are superior to lambdas and uh, if you can use method reference please use method reference insti instead of lambda uh, all right what else do we have we have methods specially created in standard library to be utilized as method references like this we have uh, class objects it's utility class and it has some methods that might look stupid for you like uh, this one objects dot is null object of object and uh, it returns uh, true if object is uh, null and false if it's not null and vice versa objects dot not null so come on you might think come on is it is it hard to check it using simple if why why do they put this stupid thing inside the standard library they put it inside standard library on purpose and this purpose is to use these methods as method references like this uh, list is uh, uh, just list and uh, list interface has remove if method and remove if method uh, accepts predicate here and this is actually predicate so we can uh, remove all the null elements from uh, from list using this single liner just uh, concise and beautiful code here and like a stream filter objects not null. So here we are just using these methods. We are not calling it in ordinary code, like inside your methods, but you can pass these uh, methods as method references. Okay, and uh, as I told you, in order to 
in order to write your lambdas you can assign them and if, if you want to, to write some method or some library that works with lambdas you can uh, you must think about functional types like you're writing a method and this method is going to accept uh, some lambda so uh, you must think about the functional type of the parameter of this method like what do you want from this lambda what parameters do you want from this lambda what's return type and uh, in practice you usually never write your own functional types so you might think uh, from 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 the beginning about uh, when i told you about this functional interface annotation that you must uh, just define your own interface and put the functional that's what novice programmers often do but i warn you against this please don't uh, define your functional interfaces when you can reuse the standard ones and in most of the cases in 99 percent of the cases you will perfectly do with standard functional interfaces already defined in standard library and uh, these ones are most commonly used uh, first of all is runnable runnable is used in libraries which uh, uh, are suited for concurrent programming like uh, please do something in parallel Yes, I assign you some task plus do it in parallel and you are just uh, passing runnable to it. So it doesn't accept any arguments, it doesn't return anything, it just does something. Supplier. Supplier is uh, a function that doesn't have any parameters but it returns something. And due to generics, hopefully you all know what generics are, from our previous class. By using generics, uh, this is really a generic interface. So it can be supplier of anything, of strings, of integers, of your, I don't know how complicated your stuff, uh, but uh, you just can pass it as a type parameter here. It's, it will be, it will work as supplier. Uh, cons consumer is vice versa, something that uh, just swallows something and uh, produces nothing. B consumer is uh, a consumer that can uh, swallow pair of things. Okay. Uh, using these uh, functional types, we can also do some functional programming, like combining lambdas into another lambda. When I told you about lambda expressions and that method references are just expressions, what can we usually do with expressions? If expressions are numerical, then we can add, divide, multiply, and do stuff with numerical. If expressions are strings, then we can concatenate strings and take substrings out of strings. So usually we can do stuff with expressions. And uh, the most wonderful thing about lambda expressions is that you can also do stuff with lambda expressions. They are actions and you do stuff with them. Like this. Like, uh, uh, and then here, you can just, uh, I don't know, um, uh, have uh, some consumer and uh, you uh, just uh, can write another consumer uh, uh, that will work as a consumer for strings and it's compound out of this one when we write foo and then list add this one is a functional expression expression on two functions like uh, uh, see foo here is function or oh, it's functional interface foo dot and then and then is operation of this function and uh, what we have here is functional expression so what actually consumer string bar doing it does the following first it calls consume method on foo and uh, foo consumer will consume this string and then this string will be added to some list so instead of writing code in, in the way that you are accustomed to writing first do this semicolon do this semicolon do this semicolon 
Now we are doing, we are writing code in functional way. That's what functional programming is about. This is another paradigm. And uh, Java is not functional programming language. But you must un understand, you must know at least at this point that not all the languages share the same paradigm. Most modern languages, they are multi-paradigm languages. This means in Java, mostly you are writing object-oriented code with, uh, in uh, traditional procedural style. But if you wish, if you are willing to do some functional programming, then you can do using standard library and uh, uh, combination of uh, functional interfaces. There are languages like Haskell, which are just uh, uh, built around functional paradigm. So uh, you are writing code in, not in not in this style. Do this semicolon, do that semicolon. You are thinking about functions and composition of functions. So I, my goal uh, here is not to teach you functional programming. I just show you some trivial examples. But you must from now on understand that there is such a thing as functional programming. It's quite a big thing, and you may study it as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, another another examples of uh, functional interface. Uh, first of all, the most commonly used functional interface is function, of course. Function is functional interface, and this is most commonly used because uh, uh, I think it makes sense for you why function has two type arguments here, t and r. T is the type of argument of the function, and r is the type of result of the function, right? So if you have uh, something like foo of uh, t of something of my var and this foo re returns result r, r, this can be converted to a functional interface called function. Because it's a function. A single argument and single return value here. So function tr is the most commonly used functional interface in Java language. B function is a function that uh, utilizes, that expects two arguments. If you want a function with three arguments, then you will certainly need to define your own functional interface, not library one, but this is a rare case. In most cases, you, uh, one or two arguments will do for you. And here are examples of uh, compositions and uh, 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 of functions. This is the most <laughs> the most tricky or the most common use thing. If we have, say, function f, and we might apply it the following way. Like, first we we want to calculate g of x, and using this result and uh, use it as argument of function f. What we got here is another, fu another function, like composition of functions. In, uh, in mathematics, we also write like this. So we are using uh, <coughs> two functions to compose a single function out of two. This composition uh, resembles like multiplying of uh, numbers so actually in mathematics the composition of functions is just an operation like multiplication so if uh, if they are compatible uh, argument wise I think if, if uh, return type of uh, function G can be argument of type F then you can use this compose method so these are examples of uh, composition of functions Okay, there are also operators, and operators are like, uh, I don't know, if we have A plus B, B here works as operator, and uh, the result is of the same type as A and B. If A and B are integers, then result of plus is uh, also integer, so uh, this, is how, uh, this is why it's called binary operator, and it's only uh, one type here, because it's it can be B function with uh, T and T and T, but instead of B function, we can use binary operator. If you are studying algebra, formal algebra, for example, 
Are you studying formal algebra? We, uh, what do you mean? Uh, groups, semi-groups, monoids, no, things no. like this. Unfortunately oh, not. Okay, but uh, uh, this is from this uh, area. So uh, binary operator, unary operator, they are from uh, formal algebra. Okay, uh, and predicates. Predicates, uh, as I told you in the very beginning, are just functions that uh, takes uh, some parameter, any parameter, and return boolean. I think now you it's clear. For you. Okay, uh, uh, predicates can also be composed, and uh, with predicates, you can compose predicate with uh, your uh, familiar functions like and or negate is equal like uh, uh, like x is mortal mortal x and uh, human x see you can or just or human x it just uh, will be different predicate you understand how, how it works like so yeah I, I showing you example that uh, Lambda expressions and method references can be combined. You can do stuff with them, and you can also <coughs> you can also combine them. Work just with like with any expression. This is uh, we also have functional interfaces for primitive types. There are lots of them uh, because of uh, the limitation that I explained to you on the previous class. In Java, we cannot utilize primitive types as um, parameters of as type parameters. So I just, unfortunately, I uh, cannot write predicate of int here. This must be integer. But in order to, in order to uh, save resources, I can utilize int predicate from the standard library. So it's actually not a p supplier, p consumer. It might be int uh, supplier, long supplier, or double supplier also in predicate it's just been made for uh, because of the restrictions of generics and hopefully in future version of java future versions of java will get rid of them will be able to use predicate of int all right all right uh, this is it about uh, about uh, lambdas and method references how can we utilize them in java 8 uh, there appeared lots of very convenient default map interface methods that uh, we can utilize and I uh, strongly advise you to, to utilize them. And you can use lambdas and method references for them. Like, uh, like this, uh, compute if absent. So usually when you, I don't know if we have uh, an example of code, or should I write this code here? We have some time, so maybe I should just uh, uh, hope you see some code. Just, just a random working project. Let's spoil some project. Okay. Usually, uh, if you have some, let it be. Uh, if you have some, uh, I don't know, hash map uh, like. Oh no! Uh, hash map of uh, string, uh, string, string. Dictionary like this and like. Oh come on! Uh, if you have this dictionary. <coughs> And uh, often you write things like this. You have a value uh, that you might, uh, I don't know, get from this dictionary, like dict uh, get full. And you often uh, write the code like this. Uh, some uh, let it be uh, like key. And uh, if you get getting this key, you often write it if dict dot key is uh, null yeah equals null if uh, if map doesn't contain this value you you're writing it like uh, okay let's uh, 
output key and as a value maybe some some value that's uh, calculated based on the key say I don't know say prefix uh, plus key and then return uh, let me extract it to to a method so uh, some let it be extracted like okay so uh, no I don't want uh, I don't want hash map to be parameter of this method I want key to be parameter of this method so let me just uh, okay extract it for and it's going to be string key now it's compiled so uh, like uh, but it's not void I'm going to to return some value here so I am just going to print it to uh, print it to uh, to console so uh, now it's it doesn't compile because we need to return some value so I say let's return uh, some value like this one return oh uh, I can put it this way d dot get uh, dot key and of course return yeah and this is not groovy this is Java so we need to to put return here okay uh, I think this code makes sense for you we are asking for some key in the di dictionary we uh, didn't find it so get returns now so we are calculating the value and we are returning this value right so uh, and uh, actually this dictionary can be uh, some uh, okay some shared but it's a static method so let, let it be like this one uh, but actually it doesn't make sense so sorry sorry I will uh, I will change it it's not going to be a static method so uh, let it be new uh, new what's this class called new vehicle okay then let it be new vehicle vehicle structured now it, it makes more sense like uh, here in constructor for example we might add something to this dictionary at least so uh, this is uh, this is how it often work works like but you can do this simpler and I advise strongly advise you to to use this stuff you can use compute if absent method what does this mean we can return dict compute if, if absent if uh, and the first parameter is of course key and the second parameter is a lambda which will be invoked if key is not there if key is there then we will just return the value if key is not there there then we can utilize lambda and let's let's write this lambda you see its function uh, question marks super string question mark extend string why it is so I will get get back to it some time later uh, but now we can we should write a function here so let it be mapping function so parameter is key just key and the value is prefix plus key right so now it's compiled and now we made code shorter good can we do better yes we can because what do we have here plus key what do we have here we have here just lambda but we can do method reference concat is actually a method that do, does concatenation and uh, actually lots of code just changed to one liner here so this is very powerful this is a very powerful default method this is a very powerful things that you must use everywhere in your code so maybe in your game of life <laughs> you might um, may think about uh, just uh, changing something like extra ifs extra things when you are just uh, 
looking up something in your um, in your maps with lambda expressions. And what's good about this computer website? You know what's good? That this one is going to be thread safe. When uh, uh, in two weeks I will uh, tell you about concurrent programming in Java. This is a very hard topic, so be prepared. It's a very tricky topic about concurrent execution. And uh, I will tell you that it's uh, very difficult to to write the so-called thread-safe code, the code that will execute correctly uh, from different processes, from different parallelly running threads. And this one, this one, since it comes from standard library, it's already thread safe so you can uh, you can uh, consider this as atomic operation so uh, you're just passing a lambda here it can be this uh, this simple method reference or some complex lambda it depends on your task that you saw but uh, if we are going to call this extracted from different threads in parallel still you will not end up uh, with uh, calling this uh, this method twice, only once. If it's not there for the first thread, for some first thread, then it will be called once, it will be computed once, it will be saved inside this dictionary, and then the saved, the cached value will be used. So this is actually a very powerful thing that we wrote. You can write it in a not thread safe way using simple ifs, if it if it's null, then calculate new value and put it here. Imagine that somebody already calculated and put the new value uh, in the period when you read this null and calculated your value. See, that's called data race. So this one will not cause data race here. So uh, this is another argument why you should use uh, this computer if absent instead of just plain checking for ifs and calculating and so and so so these are quite powerful stuff uh, okay let me switch to slides uh, I showed you only computer absent thing so there is also computer present come just compute merge and so on so on you can uh, read about them uh, on documentation so this is really really powerful stuff and you must know about it and you must utilize it in your code no please don't use this if blah blah dot get equals no then so comparators comparators is another powerful functional oriented stuff in java uh, and this is actually quite often used in enterprise application uh, for example a list of persons a person has a first name and has last name and we want a list of these persons uh, sorted and how do we usually sort them in enterprise application? We sort them according to last name. If last name uh, is the same, then we are use, uh, when we're sorting them according to first name. So uh, you can do, uh, do it like this. For, for example, if we are going to sort them according to last name only, we can use uh, we can use lambda expression for this stuff. So we can use anonymous class, but I'm not showing you anonymous class. As you might imagine, there will be lots of lots of code for, for anonymous class. New uh, co comparator and blah, blah, and so on. You can use lambda here. P1, P2, uh, P1 get last name, compare to P2 get last name. And this is, uh, this is a correct, uh, this is a correct uh, lambda. And this lambda itself cannot be converted to method reference. Just because, uh, just because we have a method call here, then method call here, and it's too complicated, and we cannot convert this one to method, uh, to method reference. So this lambda is cannot be converted. But we have an ut a utility method called comparing on comparator class, utility class. This comparing thing ex expects some lambda expressions inside. And uh, it says, OK, just give me uh, the method of extracting the thing that you are going to compare in your class. So this is that simple. 
person get last name. It's just getter for for the last name of person, and it will just uh, and you will will have a comparator here. So you just uh, use collection. So, so this is very simple example. But more than that, imagine you might want to sort by last name and then by first name. Oh, not everything is translated. <laughs> Fix it. <laughs> okay. Uh, before Java 8, you must have written this code, lots of code. Uh, okay, let's let's try to understand. Uh, first, we we are comparing it uh, get first name compared to get uh, first name. Oh, it's actually first name then last name. Doesn't matter. One of uh, one of the properties. If it's not, uh, is equals to zero, this means that uh, people have the same first name. Then we are going to compare using the second field, the second getter, right? And then return result. If it's not zero, if uh, I don't know, these names are different, then we are using this uh, the result of this comparison. If, if it's zero, this is called lexicographical order. When we, uh, how do we? Uh, oh, let me just come back to my mathematical classes because I used to to teach people <laughs> uh, set theory also uh, say imagine we have just one axis one dimension of uh, numbers and uh, uh, it's understandable which one is bigger because it's to the right it's to the left and if we have two dimensions how do we compare this dot and this dot on the plane compare in uh, I mean uh, that it will it will persist all the properties of comparison. So uh, we can do the following. We can uh, uh, just put this projection here, and if uh, this projection of this dot is to the right, then this dot is bigger than this one because we are comparing the first the first uh, axis only uh, <coughs> the first component. But if we have uh, a situation like this, where these two components are the same, then we uh, just uh, comparing the second components, the fallback. So uh, this is what, and uh, of course, this can be expanded to any number of dimensions, this lexicographical order. And this is how, why it's called lexicographical. It's like uh, what we have in dictionaries. If we have like A, A, B, a, A, C, we know that uh, this word is less, uh, is going to be earlier in dictionary than this one because we are comparing first letter, they are the same second letter, they are the same, they will compare the third letter. So we will know how in dictionaries, in uh, encyclopedias, words are ordered. So this is called lexicographical order. And this is how we must uh, be doing before Java 8. And of course, this is lots of code, and of course, it's easy to make mistakes. Please don't do this. Don't write this horrible mess yourself, because you must. What you must do is to use, is to utilize, is to utilize standard library. This is the correct way to do it. Please see. Comparator comparing person get last name, then comparing person get first name. By the way, I just realized for the third or fourth year of showing this slide that this code actually contains bug, a mistake, because I'm going to compare first name fir uh, first name first and last name last. This is buggy code, <laughs> and this is another example why you should not write this. It's very easy to, to put bug here. Here, you you will never put bug because it's, it's just uh, like you declare the result that you want. In functional programming, See the, the, the difference? Here you just explain what to do. Do this, then do this, then do this. Here you just declare the needed result. I want to compare first by last name, then by first name. And here we go. Much concise code and it will do the, the, just exactly what we want. This is what pro functional programming about. You might uh, heard before that there are declarative and imperative way to program. Declarative languages and imperative languages. So. Uh, what you wrote before was imperative style when you just explain 
step by step what to do. Uh, this is an, an example of declarative style programming when you just or just ask uh, a computer to do something for you. This is tightly related to our next uh, next topic about streams, but I think we, we won't have time for it now. So also we have a uh, uh, comparator comparing by key extractor. Also we have a uh, comparator reverse, like uh, uh, the order might be reversed. So you just put a dot reversed here. So in just I just want to sort it in reverse order. Just put reversed here and it's like clicking in Excel, you know that this A to Z, Z, Z to A. So you just add reversed here and you get what you want. So it's, it's that easy. Okay, I will not show you this one. Okay, I will show you this one. Uh, uh, it's, I don't know if you see, here, you see it. Let me just get it, uh, get it bigger, maybe. So that you understand what's it, it about. So this elderly man is coming to doctor and it says that his code won't compile. And why it's not compiling? This is a sort of <laughs> extra difficult question maybe for you at this point. And this is why this slide is in the very end and I, I was not going to show it to you, but <laughs> you saw it. Why it's not compiling? It's not compiling because uh, uh, we have, uh, we have um, a chain of uh, method calls here and the uh, Java compiler is not able to infer the actual uh, the actual type of P here because we, when we call comparing and when we call reversed here then Java uh, understands that reversed can be called on any comparator not just comparator with some specific uh, with some specific uh, type of P and here uh, when we have calling comparing, uh, P uh, for, for Java compiler, P is just an object. So we can either put uh, this here, this patch here to our code, just uh, uh, telling Java compiler the way that uh, actually this comparing method is a uh, type generic method with this type argument. Another uh, solution might be better solution might be better solution is that we're con calling round braces and call file p to p get file name and so on so on this will compile so and uh, you see that uh, the elderly man is now it's okay for him although he's just a painful solution but okay <laughs> uh, this is about java it's all about java that uh, it's not not everything is perfect in Java language. And this is because of many, many restrictions. And uh, I told with Tagir Valiev about this one, for example, and many uh, Java languages designers, they di this is well known uh, problem in Java language. And they just cannot do anything about it because it would break many things. It would break many tools. It would break uh, uh, backwards compatibility. So leave with this and just understand that uh, sometimes type inference in Java just uh, doesn't work as you want it to work.